Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to match linear equations of graphs. Now, to match an equation to its graph, you can do one of two tests, depending on the question. So, in this first example, we have three equations, and we have one graph. So, what we're going to do is we're going to choose three test points from the graph, and we're going to substitute them into all of the equations to see which equation actually satisfies all three points. So, let's try this. So from the graph, I'm going to pick points that actually cross nicely at the crosshairs. So we have one over here, and this is negative 5, positive 6. We also have the y-intercept of 0, 3. And we also have this point down here, the y-intercept, at 5, 0. All right, so let's begin. Um, it doesn't matter which order you choose to plug in the points. I'm going to start with 0, 3, just because I like 0, 3, because I get to plug in 0. So I'm going to call these equations 1, 2, and 3 to make it easier to refer to them. And I'm going to start with equation number 1. So I'm going to plug in 0, 3. So we get 3 times 0 plus 5 times 3. And we want to check that that left side equals the right side. And in this case, it does, because 3 times 0 is 0. And then 5 times 3 is 15. So 15 equals 15. All right, so, so far, equation 1 looks good. Go to equation 2 and do the same thing. 3 times 0 minus 5 times 0. Oh, no, sorry, 5 times 3 equals 15. Okay, this time we have 0, and then we have negative 15 equals 15. So we already know that this does not work. All right, and we'll check equation number 3. So 3 times 0 minus 5 times 3 equals negative 15. And yes, negative 15 equals negative 15. So we can see that this works as well. So we now are going to try another point. Let's choose 5, 0 because we get to plug in 0 again, which is always nice. So we get 3 times 5 plus 5 times 0 equals 15, and here we have, which is great, 15 equals 15. So that seems to work. We don't have to check the second equation because we already know that 0, 3 does not satisfy equation number 2. So just to double check, we're going to plug 5 and 0 into our last equation. And we get 15 minus 0 equals negative 15. And 15 does not equal negative 15, so this does not work. So if you want to even show this a little bit better, we can put slashes where they are not equal. So the only equation that satisfies both of my points, 0, 3, and 5, 0, is the first equation. So therefore, this is the equation that matches the graph. And that's how you match an equation to a given graph. Now, we're next going to take a look at how to use the equation to determine the coordinates of three points and see which graph passes through those points. And we're going to do that in this example here because this time we're given one equation but four graphs. So like I said before, we're going to determine three points from this equation, 4x minus 2y equals 8. So to maybe help me organize my information, I'm going to create a little table um, of values. And I'm going to choose x is 0. It's kind of nice and convenient. So when x is 0, I get negative 2y equals 8. So y equals negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is 1 point. All right, um, the next one. Um, actually, we're going to stop for a moment. We can check that three of these graphs, this first one here has 0, negative 4. This one also has 0, negative 4. And so does this one on the bottom. This one on the top right does not. So we know that we can eliminate um, this graph here. So let's now choose another point. This time let's put y is 0. So when I put y is 0, I get 4x equals 8. 
So now I have x equals 2. So I get 2 and 0. So we check which graph hits 2 and 0. And we can see that the graph on the bottom right is the only one that hits 2, 0. Now just to maybe double check one more point, let's plug in x is 1. So we're going to get 4 times 1 minus 2y equals 8. So 4 times 1 is 1, so we're going to go negative 2y. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides, so we get 4 on the left, sorry, 4 on the right side. Divide both sides by negative 2, and y equals negative 2. So we get the point 1, negative 2, and indeed we get 1, negative 2, which is this point here in the middle. So which graph matches the equation? Well, that would be this one down here on the bottom. Next, we're going to review how to write the equation of a line in slope y-intercept form. So to write the equation in slope y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, you need to identify two things from the graph. The first thing that you need to find is the slope. So to do this, choose two points, and you want to choose two integral points, meaning that two points that are integers, and then you're going to draw a triangle that connects these two points. To find the rise, and run. And the reason you want to do that is because slope is equal to rise divided by run. The second thing that you want to identify from the graph is the y-intercept. So recall the y-intercept, this is the value or this is the y value, specifically, where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's take a look at two examples. So determine the equation for each graph in slope y-intercept form. So let's find the slope, and we can pick any two points, make sure they cross at nice points, so we can actually identify quite a few. And I recommend that you draw the triangle so that you can find your rise and your run. So if I pick this top triangle here, I have a rise going down from here, one, two, three, four, five. So my slope, is 5 or negative 5 and then we run 2 to the left so negative 5 divided by negative 2 or you can just think of that as 5 over 2 because the graph is going up second we can see that our b value our y intercept is at 1 so therefore my equation is y equals 5 over 2x plus 1 let's try the second graph so again pick integral points here's one that nice, creates a nice triangle here's another one and here's another one okay so this time our slope we can pick this point starting at negative 8 negative 1 it goes down 1 so it's negative 1 and then right 4 and that's it and you can actually see that we keep going down 1 right 4 down 1 right 4 our y-intercept, our b-value, is right here at negative 3. So this gives us the equation y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 3. We're going to finish off the lesson with an application problem where we need to write the linear equation of a problem. So here's our first one here. So miles ahead works at speedy cars and he earns a weekly salary of $800 plus a 5% commission of his sales. Very important that it says here, of his sales. 
Identify the variables by writing a let statement, meaning identify the variables and what they mean, and then write a linear equation describing Miles's weekly earnings. So we can let E, or you can use W as well, let's say that is his weekly earnings. And his weekly earnings are dependent on how much he sells. So S can be his sales. So this equation here, um, we're going to write E. So we know that we start off with weekly earnings depending on sales. That means that his weekly earnings E is equal to, and it says here, 5% of his sales. So we're going to change the 5% to decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.05, and of usually means times in math. So it'll be 0 0.05 times s, and then here it has plus. So plus means we're going to add a salary of $800. So that would be plus $800. Let's take a look at a second problem that's a little bit more difficult. So because light travels much faster than sound, you see lightning before you hear a thunderclap. If the storm is 650 meters from you, the time interval between the flash and the thunderclap is 2 seconds. If the storm is 1300 meters from you, the time interval is 4 seconds. So identify the variables and write a let statement, and then write a linear equation to determine your distance from the storm based on the time interval. So we already have our let statement here or we have what we can define. So D is the distance from the storm. And T can be our time interval. Now what that time interval is, is the time interval between the flash and the thunderclap. All right, so we know that D is dependent on T. So we're going to say that D is equal to, and then we're going to figure out what our slope is. Now this equation, sorry, this question doesn't tell us explicitly what it is. So we're going to have to find it. So the slope, we know it's distance dependent on time, and the distance here is 650 meters and 1300. Actually, you know what? I've made a typo. This should actually say 1350. So if yours doesn't say 1350, please change that. So 1,350 meters. So because that's our y value, our change in our y value is 1,350 minus 650 divided by, and the values that match those distances are 4 seconds and 2 seconds, which is our change in our x value. So it's going to be 4 minus 2. So we simplify this. And we get 700 over 2. So our slope is 350. So we now know that this is going to be D equals 350T. Now we need to find our y-intercept. So to do this, I'm going to show you in a table. So I'm going to put the points that we already know. We have 2 and 650 and 4 and 1350. Now, right now, the difference is 700, but according to our slope, our distance is actually, sorry, our difference is actually only 350, and that's because we're missing the times 1 and 3. So when I fill in the times 1 and 3, I will see that 650 plus 350, this is 1,000, and when I subtract 650 minus 350, I'm going to get 300. But remember to find our y-intercept, we actually need to subtract to get to zero. And therefore, this way, I need to subtract 350. And now I get negative 50 as my y-intercept. So now my equation is d equals 350t minus 50. And that's how you find the equation of this um, problem here.